learn how to set up uh, using Colibri set up a workflow to generate Design Explorer. It's the, the workflow is a little bit different from what normal Grasshopper is, so just I try to uh, show you the simplified version or abstract version and then Mingo will show you how to set it up. Uh, so let's say you have a definition, right? A Grasshopper workflow overall is, if you simplify, there are a bunch of inputs here. Usually we use a slider, so you have a bunch of parameters and then you get some output here. It's as simple as this. So this is all your crazy, like whatever spaghetti that you make. All it does, it can be as, okay, whatever. It can be daylight, energy, geometry, a structure, whatever you do. You have a bunch of inputs, you have a bunch of outputs. What Colibri does, the whole Colibri workflow is, it has a collector, oh sorry, iterator, which is similar to fly. So what iterator does, it takes all the uh, sliders and then there is a collector here which collects the result for each iteration. So this is all we need to do. Basically whatever you do with your definition, just simplify it in your mind as your definition. We don't care about that. There is a bunch of components. You figure out what are the inputs that you're interested in. You figure out what are the outputs that you're interested in. Then you create this workflow and then you just run it. And when you run it, it creates uh, all the materials that you need to upload it to the website. And Mingo will show you how to do that. So once you have this and you run it, whatever your definition is, you can share it with anyone online. Thanks, Hans. It's as simple as this, just not to get confused, because there will be a number of new components here, but the whole workflow is pretty simple. So okay, thanks Mustafa for the brief introduction. So we're going to just jump into the demo of the Grasshopper. So before doing that, just copy, I just upload a couple of folder inside of Juno, the course folder called the Parametric Energy Model with Calibri. The same mod, the same folder that you were in, uh, is on your distribution. And there will file without finished. Just open that file. Copy that file to your local machine first. And once you open, you will have the same grasshopper file as here. Everyone good? Okay. By now, you guys should be, or you guys should all be able to understand what this is, this graph is, grasshopper is doing. So this is basically running a simple box for the energy simulation and getting the peak load and peak uh, peak cooling load, heating load, and the EOI as the output and input is we got a uh, window to wall ratio u value for the gliding and the r value for the opaque wall it's pretty clear here and the room is here so what we are doing is basically optimize the, this facade with the different settings Currently, we only have three settings here, right? Uh, three inputs, sorry. And now we want to iterate all the combinations from these three settings. So we are going to drop, okay, because I have a full TT toolbox installed. You only have the Calibri here, so you don't have to worry about the rest of them. If you want to install that, you can download from the full, full, full right now. So the so first, one, first one is the iterator. So you have two options. One is input, one is selection. We are not going to cover selection here because I have another advanced setting on the Hydra, and you can watch look look at that example here. So 
Right now, we are just in, we are just to iterate all the option combinations from these three uh, inputs. So we just connect them one by one. Okay, so. Once you connect them all, it will tell you how many iterations you currently have with these three inputs. So, because I can see on the screen, so what happens is you have to connect all the inputs to that input N, and as soon as you connect it to input N, it will generate a new input for you, right? And the name will be the same as the name of the slider. And yes. Once you're done, you can remove that that extra input. Right. So this is the iterator. Once you click fly, don't click that. Yeah, it will go through all combinations one by one, one by one. Like like what you did in uh, the first problem with the uh, PV, right? With fly, and. And here we want to set the uh, simulation run first. Yeah. And now we have these three outputs. We can do either this way or we can name load here. It works the same thing. And then we want to collect all these outputs by using Calibri parameters. It works the same thing, same way. Just connect them one by one. Just double check what's the output from the uh, this component. It will tell you you have one. Uh, you currently you have three outputs, a data. The first one, cooling load, with value. Uh, peak, peak heating with number value and EOI with value, and of course you can have a what is this? Of course you can have a, a units here as well. Just make the the output clear. Does that make sense? And now. If you have iterator and parameter which collects all the outputs that are right. And the final step is uh, aggregator, which Mustafa mentioned is collector. So you have a couple inputs here. The first one, where do you want to save the, all these? output that are from images and 3D models and by default it is set to C drive Calibri and of course you can create one let's see let's go to C drive Calibri I'll create a new one you can Copy the file pass. Double quotation. Control V. And you will see the same num same name here. There's the one input called genome, which is the same same concept as the 
what you saw in Galactus, right? And just connect that one to the iterator. And the next one is phenom. Because we don't want to confuse you with the uh, Galactus uh, fit fitness. So we came up with a new name called phenom, which is because Calibri is not trying to find the best solution for you. It is just run the simulation automatically. So you have to you are the, the person to find the best solution. Optimize the combination, I would say. So you connect the uh, output from the parameters to the phenom and create a new toggle, brilliant toggle to the right. Does it make sense? So I also want to capture the view of the kernel because it is changing the one, one, one input is changing the window to wall ratio of this facade, right? So usually what I do I will create another plus button here click it, create a new floating viewport because I want to set this view be still next time I open it again I it always have the same view right and type in name the view assuming this view is good enough and I want to change it to white background whatever you have so far is fine I'll go 3D view So how do you bring this view Does it tell, How do you tell this aggregator to capture the view of this 3D view currently Inside the right now we, we, we have an uh, image setting And ha here has a input called views, which means you can input the view name 3D view here. If you have multiple views you want to capture, in this sometimes sometime you have a 3D perspective view here, and sometimes you want to also capture the plan view as well. So you can also do that as well. So in this case, we can do multiple let's do top so where's the top? top is here but we don't have anything, just, just a demo uh, that's fine, yeah so connect this view names to the views and then also you can set the dimension of the images like by default it is set to 600 if you want a higher resolution for the final report you can set it higher of course it will take longer to capture and take longer takes longer to for the design to load all the images so for some of you if you didn't know the concept of name view name view is basically a feature in Rhino Save the new port. Uh, if you know Rhino, probably you know then Like next time you zoom in here and you want to go back to previous view, just, just double click that one. It will jump back that's, to the previous that's one. That's fine if you, if you want to use any of your default views, that's good too, but then the problem is exactly what we was that next time that you come back, you don't have all the settings saved. So the good thing about name view is you just set it up and it's set. I think if you're using one, you know that name view. And in this case, I also want to export the 3D model as well. And we have a visualized zone geometry here. So the output from here is 
all the lines you also can use the frame uh, wireframe as well to visualize the to, to generate all the wireframes connect this geometry to the 3D object just to say a little bit about why you're doing this again the, the good thing about uh, Calibria is that as I said is the advanced fly so not only it, it trades between all the options but it also automates the process of uh, capturing the images and the other thing that it has it can cap saves the 3D object so you can upload and visualize the 3D model on the web right that's that's an optional you can leave that 3D objects empty if you don't want to have the 3D geometry and only get the images again one case that you could have used this during the semester is when I ask you to run the daylight analysis for nine point different points of the time like for nine different times and get all this stuff so you could run it and then you could instead of 3D object there you could have the geometry and also have the 3D mesh of the results right so you could have baked all of them together as a 3D model when you see the result it makes more sense but again that image setting and the 3D objects are optional it's they are like, optional yeah. you don't have to always set it up it's up to you and you know this aggregator is optional you don't have to capture all this output if you don't mind to <laughs> run again basically it can work like a normal fly yeah and now we get back to the editor once we click that it gives you a warning because all clip is designed to try to detect all the problems we had before in our works previous works so it is also trying to protect your your data and your simulations what is this and <laughs> sorry so here's a here's a problem he detects. It says aggregator uh, aggregator is not recording the data because it knows you connect the iterator to the aggregator and uh, without setting it to true. Once you click to fly, it is not recording anything. So it is trying to detect uh, uh, all problem you might have. It is basically saving like. The all night running simulation without capturing anything. So before doing that, it is trying to tell you the problem here. So just set to true. Then go back to the folder. You will see there's a default data.csv file inside your your the study folder. And now we are good to to run the simulation because we have sixteen. We should be fine. Yeah, should be fine. Or before that, usually you you don't you won't have this like, this small amount of iterations. You have option to fly test. Basically, it will pick randomly pick three options from your com combinations to test the entire workflow for you. If if there's a problem with that, right? So we we, we can also do the fly test as well. A, so this is a final warning of oh, not final warning just review tells you you have three out of 16 to run in this case and once we and also tells you how to stop this simulation but sometimes run a grasshopper is not like uh, listen responding to to your keyboard and anything so it also has a building like stopwatch or what you say a uh, file were located inside your study folder named running.txt once you're running like hundreds of simulations you, you you notice there's a problem with that you want to stop it out and the grasshopper is not listening to you so you will you just simply delete that file it will stop at the next time so you don't have to crash entire reno and then run everything again and just okay we are good to go. And now we're just watching. So some of the 
usual mistakes that you're going to make, and that's why this test fly is important. Is one is you set up the wrong view, or at the last minute you change the viewport and you don't know, and you run it. The other thing is you think you are capturing the right result, but you don't really. You just connected something else. Or the the third one is usually you set like the run energy plus or, or run radiance to false, and you didn't remember. So when it runs, one of the analysis doesn't run. That's why you always want to run three, four cases, visualize it, make sure everything is fine, and then run everything. And like I'm telling you, as a person who have done that for a couple of times, for like hundreds of runs, you I hate the same thing. You just run it. You go home. You come back tomorrow in the morning. You see, oh my god, everything is basically garbage. You know, because you didn't check that three. So it, take your time. Check that three inputs to make sure everything is fine before running hundreds of runs. It's pretty simple to make mistakes. And you think like, why? But then when you do it enough, you understand why. Because it's just, there are so many inputs, and there is a good chance that you make mistakes. Like, what was the name of that? Like, a smart, a smart failure? Yeah, let's fail faster and sooner. So once we get all the simulation done, and we got this folder, have all these input, uh, all these files, that the dashboard can understand. Right, we have one CSV file which records all the data. If you want to open that, so we currently have three inputs and three outputs, two images and a 3D model. Right, don't save that and don't try to modify that because you might make a mistake for that. And Open so because because design spoiler is need some uh, a way to to load your data because it, because it is a web based application it cannot understand your local files so that's why you need to uh, upload all these informations all those files to the uh, somewhere on the cloud right you can either have uh, your own server somehow or everyone has a Google Drive here. So I just already created a folder here inside of Google Drive, my personal Google Drive, and let's say basically log into your Google Drive uh, wherever you are on, on a browser. If you have Google Drive already installed, it's on your machine. That's even easier. Just copy this file. What we need to do right now, again, uh, what Mingo said is you do when you do all this stuff. This will make a folder, right? This will make a package for you. That's the design explorer package. That's CSV file and uh, JSON file and then uh, image file. So this is all local. What we need is the World Wide Web or internet need to have to have access to this. You can't have access to your local files because of the security issues. Like it's not that easy. Like you can't get all the local files loaded. So what we need to do is to copy all these files on a Google Drive or your server as, but Google Drive is the easy one that basically is good for you to get it started. But if you want to keep your data for yourself, you can just use the use your own server. So what we, we are doing right now is just, we're taking the same folder that you created and we push it to Google Drive. If you have Google Drive installed locally, then you can just write to Google Drive directly, right? If you have it on your machine. Make sense? So okay, so that that's why you're doing this. Basically, you you need to copy all of them to to your Google Drive in some folder. Right. So I'm gonna copy the entire folder, study folder. Just drag drop. Can it work with OneDrive too? Yeah, OneDrive is still working. Yeah, it works with OneDrive. And... Yeah. Okay. But I got only nine Three because you did run test, right? If you do test, it only does three. That makes sense. So you go back to the interface. So if you do the full slide, it will give you 16. But if you right click there and do fly test, that only does three for test. Right. If you oh okay now I think like did you run it three times? We got nine. Yeah. I so if you do it next time, can you? I think she's overwriting. No. Okay. 
Okay, here's another thing. Once uh, iterator is, uh, iterates all simulations down, it will automatically set this aggregator to four, uh, right to false because it probably understands you next time when you open that web file, if that toggle is set to truth, it might probably overlay to whatever you have inside the folder, right? So it is trying to protect your, your previous study. And, and now, if we want to run again, we want to click it again. So here's another warning, because it knows the study folder is not empty. Do you want to overwrite everything inside or not? So if you know that's, that's, that's a previous study, that doesn't matter, we want to overwrite everything or create a new folder for that. So if I'm not going to... Let me just for the if I'm just copy, paste <laughs> for the backup. See, I'm gonna override the everything. And go to the folder, it will delete everything inside of the folder. Does it make sense? Just think about it in, in multiple runs. So you do this thing, you're done, then you open the file again, like somewhere else. If if Colibri doesn't take care of that and doesn't set the right to false, next time as soon as you open the file, it will basically override all the studies that you ran before. So it basically erases everything. Make sense? That's why you have this false. That false protects you from the new run. So when you change it to true, it says, are you sure you want to overwrite the file? Do you have already a copy or something? But that was a very, like when we had flag environment, it's a very common mistake. Like you set the boolean to true, you close the file, everything, you open it next time, and it just starts overwriting all the values that you have. And then good luck with, with just getting the data back. <laughs> So that's why this, you have this thing in the workflow. So now you are also good to run the simulation again. So because we have the, all the data here, I'm gonna upload this data to the Google Drive. Just simply drag and drop. So here it says 10 files already uploaded. And another thing, the final step we want to check is make this folder to be public. Because you want the design support to access this folder, all the data inside this folder, right? So we want to right click the folder, go to the share, you have option down here, advanced. And I want to change the access to the first one, public on the web. Does that sense? Once you set this folder to be public, pick the, the first one, and then you will have a link Okay, let me let me do it again. Once you set this setting to be uh, set this folder to be public, you will have the link of this folder as well. You can just right click copy. Or in this case, I I forgot to uh, to copy the link just. Go to that folder inside of the folder and copy the link. This link it also works. And the last step, just let the design folder to load the data. No. Yeah, you have to use. Either Firefox uh, or uh, Chrome. Yeah. Chrome Firefox, maybe it works with Microsoft Edge, but I don't think it works with Chrome. So, right here you have a button to get the data. Ask the design supporter where do you get want to load the data. Just here from the cloud, copy the link from the uh, Google, Google Drive. 
एंड लोड हो जाता so now now you have a a steady link so which means next time whenever you want to open this study open the data explorer with this set of study you can just directly go to that the link it will load everything again for you and the better thing is like you can share this link with anyone all around the world now and they, they will see the same interface that you see so if you run the study and you want to share it with someone else you just copy this link and then email them this link and basically they will see the same interface yeah if this data is set, uh, a private simulation is private from the company you don't want to share this because this is like a property from your company and now you have everything with with data with images and you have option to change the images one or two and you also have oh yeah, I think there is a that with, without, without mesh or, yeah yeah, it doesn't export one. Oh, it does because the view is done correctly. Set it correctly. Uh, it is there somewhere. Uh, because in, usually in this case, we will export a mesh with with a wireframe, like ground or something. Let me also export the windows as well, let's see. The surface of the window. I'll connect the geometry to a 3D geometry with shift. Let's run again. So, what happened to this one? Let's just try to replace these two new 3D models. Because we have the link already copied, we can just directly access this study with the same link now it loads so what did you do? I just exported uh, some, some meshes with that and you see that's exactly what you have to check your, your workflow imagine instead of running free you have run like 100 something and then you're done and then you come to visualize it and it doesn't show up because okay there was a lot now in the viewer or something so you want to catch all this before you run your 100 run. That's why the best thing for the next time. Right? Is any questions on the workflow? OK, we can check that. But any question about the whole workflow? OK, one thing to, to, take, uh, to keep in mind is, because this, everything is writing to design export to, to the Google Drive or somewhere shared, the beauty is now, if you give access to multiple people to, to work to the same design, uh, to the same folder, you can basically, can imagine, you can use this workflow shared between different people uploading data at the same time. This, one, this is one thing. The other thing is, if you have this folder, if you install Google Drive locally on your laptop and you don't use the web interface, the good thing is, you can let the analysis run, and you can go in Design Explorer, and once in a while you can re refresh the page, and while it's running, you can see the new results coming in. Does it make sense? Because if, if, the, if the Google Drive is locally there, it's always writing to the same folder that this interface is looking to. So as soon as it's synced, it, 
there will be updated. What, why that is useful? Because then during the run, you can check the result, and at some point, maybe you understand, okay, I don't need to run anything more. I already got the, the answer that I wanted from this study. You know, so you can stop it. That can save a lot of time. And I think it's, the live update is pretty interesting. Yeah. Well. Okay, we have, what, 20 minutes? If, if, even if I want to go all the way to you. And uh, can, if, can you check? So if you can check, I'll just want to go and talk about the last problem, have a discussion. Check what? Uh, with her. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll.